Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins, and today I want to show you how to be able to dismiss keyboards with a done button. It's one of the common problems that developers have. When the user clicks on inside the text field, a keyboard shows up. How do you get rid of it? What we're going to do is we're going to create a done button that's right above the keyboard that the user can click to get rid of the keyboard. I'm starting with a simple application that just has two text fields in it right now. One text field shows the alphanumeric keyboard, the other one shows a number keyboard or a number pad. And the way I did that is if you look at the properties of the text field, you have a choice of which kind of keyboard you want to show. So for this one, I chose the number keypad or the number pad. And one of the things I want to go over first is some of the terminology that Apple uses. Apple calls keyboards input views. And the reason why I want to tell you that it's called input view is because one of the properties that we're going to use to add the done button above the keyboard is we're going to use the input accessory view. So basically we're taking the input view and we're adding an accessory to it. Accessory just means you're adding something in addition to something else. All right, let me show you how we're going to do that. We're starting with a simple project that just has two text fields. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, well, let's clean this up a little bit. Get rid of the things that we don't need. And then we'll create outlets for our text fields. We'll pretend this is an application where someone has to enter in their name and phone number. So we'll just call this a name text field. And we'll call this the phone number text field. Okay, let's talk about how we're going to solve this problem. The main property that we're going to be using is called the input accessory view. And the input accessory view exists on the text fields. For example, if we look at the name text field, we can see there's a property on it called input accessory view. And this is, as you can read in the description, the custom accessory view to display when the text field becomes the first responder. That just means when the cursor is inside that text field and it's active, we want to show this accessory view. And the accessory view appears above the keyboard. So we're basically going to be doing something like this. But in this case, we don't want to use a blank UI view. Instead, I'm going to use a toolbar. So I'm going to create a toolbar. I'm going to put a button in it that says done. And when they click on that done button, it's going to remove the keyboard. So let's create the toolbar. And the toolbar will have a done button in it. And for this, we are going to use a, uh, not a toolbar button, it's called a bar button item. Bar button items are the buttons that can go inside of a toolbar. So I'm going to use this constructor. And this is the button that you want to put, or the, the bar button item that you want to put inside the toolbar. It's an enumeration, and you can see all of our different options that we have here. I want the done button. And the reason I want to use a toolbar, the reason why I like the toolbar so much for the input accessory view is because of this right here. It's localized. That means if you're going to be deploying this application to other countries, you do not have to translate, come up with all the different translations for the word done. The iOS system will do that automatically for you. The target will be this view controller. And the selector, I mean the uh, action here, this is what function do you want to call when someone clicks on that done button. We don't have a function right now, so I'm just going to make one up. Let's see, not selection, selector. And it's going to be in this class, and we'll call it done clicked. So they're clicking the done button. Let's add that function right now. Okay, and when they click the done button, we want to basically tell the view that we're done editing. This function right here, end editing, this is what's actually going to 
uh, close the keyboard or the input view. Okay, we need to add this done button to the toolbar. So the toolbar will set those items. And you can see here it takes an array of bar button items. So we only have one. And animated, that can be true or false. To be honest, I tried both and I don't really see any difference. So I will just set it to false. Okay, now instead of using a blank UI view for the input accessory view, we'll show the toolbar. All right, let's see how this looks. There you go, you have a done button. And there's no, we didn't set the input accessory view for the phone number text field, so nothing shows up right now. But there's something wrong here. The toolbar actually isn't showing up. We see the done button, but we don't see a toolbar. So when I click on this, nothing's happening. It's not, it doesn't even look like it's even registering that I'm, it's even being clicked. There's a way to fix this. For your toolbar, you need size to fit. So basically that's going to expand the toolbar to fit your input accessory view. Now let's give it a shot. There it is. Now you can see the toolbar. It's gray, has a line above it. And when I click done, something actually happens. So now let's add the input accessory view when you click on the numbers field, phone number field. There you go. Now you've just given your users an ability to close the keyboard whenever they want to. But what if, let's take a look at this again. What if you want the done button to appear over on the right hand side? Well, there's an easy way to do that. We can add another item to our toolbar that pushes the done button over to the side. So the way we do this is we're gonna add another item to the toolbar and it's called a flexible space which is another UI bar button item. And this time, whoops. Instead of any one of these uh, types of buttons, we're gonna use the flexible space. We don't need a target because we're not gonna be clicking on it or an action. So we don't want anything to happen when you click on the flexible space. And then when we add it, we want to add it before the done button. Okay, let's run that and see what happens. There we go. So the flexible space is pushing the done button over to the right. And really all we're doing here in the in that input accessory view is we're basically just doing this. We're creating a toolbar, which looks like this. We're creating a done button, which looks like that. And then we're putting a flexible space in front of it like that. And this is basically what's appearing above our keyboard. But we're just doing that in code. All right, great. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned how you can give users an ability to dismiss their keyboards. It's pretty simple. And remember, the input accessory view takes any UI view. In this case, we use a toolbar because it gives us a done button, which doesn't have to be translated when you distribute your app to different countries. But you could also use a navigation bar, which also has a done button that doesn't have to be translated when it gets sent to different countries. But you can also include a UI view that has buttons, other buttons, that custom buttons that you want to create, or any other control in that UI view that you want to supply to the user.
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any other ideas on different ways to implement the input accessory view to dismiss keyboards, please leave a comment so we can all learn. Thanks. Bye.